Hi everybody, JJ here with ASUS. Have you been thinking about building your first gaming PC, but you've been a bit confused when it comes to all the different types of components that are out there, wondering about compatibility, whether it's all gonna work and whether you're gonna have a stable and reliable system? Well, don't worry about it. Regardless of whether you're accounting for the CPU, the graphics cards, how many watts that you're gonna have in terms of the power supply, how much memory, the storage device, the cooling considerations, we've gone ahead and actually defined all the different components you're gonna need at three different price points. So that you're gonna have a great, reliable, and fully compatible experience when you go about building your first gaming PC with ASUS. So let's go ahead and jump into the three different builds that we've got for you while I go ahead and give you some insights into different components that you have within each one of these builds. So for our last build, we're going to be coming in at a little bit over $1,000 at $1,000, about $65. Again, for the most recent pricing, make sure to go ahead and check out the link in the description down below. Now, as always, when you go about budgeting a build, there are a couple of things to keep in mind that it's always easy to kind of keep bringing the price down on every single item to try to maybe move up to, let's say, uh, a faster graphics card or let's say a faster uh, processor. Uh, ultimately, what we've really tried to do, though, in all these builds is to balance not only the overall look and feel, but make sure that we're also focusing on good quality components that have good interoperability and compatibility that you can feel confident in when you go about building your system. I also was definitely conscious that I wanted to have a good looking system where I didn't really want to have anything feel or look out of place. And so it's been balanced, I think, be able to offer a good quality aesthetic um, that is going to offer a nice overall look and feel for a lot of you out there that are going to be building the system. With that being noted, again, you can also take a look at some of our optional recommendations if you want to be able to tweak a little bit of how these systems look and feel, and maybe you want to swing a little bit more towards one type of component than another. And as always, if you have more interest in, let's say, getting more specialized feedback, make sure to join our PCDIY Facebook group. Now first, let's go ahead and talk about the CPU. Here we've gone ahead and selected the Ryzen 5 3600. So this is the latest generation Ryzen 3000 series of processor. It's a six core 12 thread series processor, which also supports overclocking. This is a great chip. And just like in our previous build where we selected it, it's gonna offer a great foundation for just about any type of usage scenario, whether you're talking about general productivity, gaming, or streaming. And again, because it supports overclocking, we can definitely get even more performance out of it. And I would definitely note that again, just like in our previous build, the specialized options that we have in our motherboards, such as per core CCX uh, options, specialized eight mode to be able to maximize PBO operation, or full on just general manual overclocking, all these options and more are available within the ASUS UEFI to allow you to get the most out of this Ryzen series processor. So let's talk about the motherboard. We're gonna be using the Tough Gaming B550M plus Wi-Fi. And this board is gonna be a great choice. It's got a really cool look and feel to it, and it's gonna feature the latest generation chipset, which gives us all the latest generation specification support, so we can fully support all the Ryzen 3000 series processors. It being B550, it's also built for the future, so even in a higher build like this, you're gonna have support for the next gen Ryzen series processors. PCI Gen Express 4 is also gonna be supported on this motherboard for M.2 based SSDs. Also faster speeds of DDR4 memory that can be run uh, with the latest Ryzen series processors are also going to comfortably be able to be run on here. In terms of the kind of core specifications, you've got support for the latest generation of USB connectivity, including 3.1 and 3.2 with both Type-A and Type-C connections. You're going to have 2.5 gigabit LAN as well as Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. Now, in relation to your networking connectivity, you're also going to have our Turbo LAN software that's going to allow you to easily prioritize your games, even if you're running other things in the background, so that you can make sure to get the best response and latency performance from games and Windows. You're going to have the Tough Gaming Isolated Audio Design, which features specialized audio presets from DTS to allow you to get a better experience in music and movies and games, along with the hardware uh, level improvements that are featured in the Isolated Audio Design. You've got three RGB headers, which are built onto the motherboard, great for adding in things like LED strips or RGB fans, like you see in the system here next to me. And all the way around, it's really just going to be a great choice uh, for your gaming build. And, you know, just one more thing that it adds is going to be our cool AI noise canceling technology, which works for both analog and digital microphones. Now let's talk about the memory. Here we've gone ahead and selected 16 gigabytes uh, from Gel. This is going to be DDR4-3600, which works really well with the latest generation of Ryzen series processors, which can comfortably be run these type of DDR4 frequencies. We have easy options built into the UEFI called DOCP that allow you to quickly enable this frequency. I'm also a big fan that this memory also supports RGB lighting, so we can go ahead and take advantage of the RGB lighting that's on the motherboard and also synchronize it with these RAM kits to be able to add a little bit more kind of a cool look and feel to our system. For all, great choice to be able to give us more than enough memory for general productivity and for gaming and also giving us some room for the future. In terms of the storage, we've gone ahead and selected Team Group's MP34. 
PCIe NVMe based SSD, 512 gigabytes. This is gonna give us more than enough space to be able to go ahead and comfortably install all our windows, our general applications, personal files, and of course all our games. And it being a PCIe NVMe based SSD, it's gonna offer us very, very good performance in terms of how fast Windows boots, applications and games install, patches install, and of course just giving us a snappy and responsive Windows environment. And also because it's an M.2 based SSD, there's no cables to attach, making the installation process just that much more streamlined. Now next, let's go ahead and talk about the graphics card. Generally the most exciting part of any type of gaming build. And here uh, we've gone ahead and really moved up from our previous recommendations and we've gone ahead and selected the 5700 XT. This is gonna be a very high performance GPU with eight gigabytes worth of memory and is really purpose built to give us actually ultra high frame rate gaming performance at 1080p. So if you're definitely looking to be able to drive 120, 140 Hertz, uh, 165, 200 plus Hertz, or you're looking to be able to have very good gaming performance at 2560 by 1440, this GPU is gonna get it done for you. Uh, this is gonna be a triple fan design, which is gonna offer good cooling performance. It's gonna be cool and quiet. It features a backplate based design. In addition to this, it also features our auto extreme production technology. What that is essentially is robotic production and analysis of the actual graphics card construction, ultimately providing you a more reliable and durable graphics card in the long term, especially as we're investing more into a graphics card, it's nice to be able to see these type of benefits that are present in terms of its construction. Now for this card, it also is gonna be the overhauled version as I noted earlier. So some of the cool benefits you're gonna have for this design is gonna be the Axial Tech fans, which are gonna be special static pressure optimized fans. That essentially just means as airflow is directed directly from those fans, they're focused to really hit the core componentry. So the actual GPU, the memory, the PCB, and really get into that actual large heatsink assembly. That heatsink assembly has also been refined and revised to be able to offer even better temperature dissipation performance, not only for the GPU, but for the memory and for the VRM assembly. It's also gonna feature zero dB technology, which is something that we've only had generally on our higher end Strix gaming cards, which is great because when you're not gaming and essentially you're just maybe uh, watching a video or browsing online, then your cards is gonna be extremely quiet because the fans won't even spin. But the great thing about this is that all of this can be customized in the GPU tweak graphics card utility. So if you wanna be able to overclock the card or custom configure the fans or any of those different types of parameters, you can do that by just jumping into the utility. Now next up, we're gonna be talking about the chassis. Here we've gone ahead and selected the Tough Gaming GT301. So this is gonna really complement the motherboard, the graphics card, and really have a kind of consistent look and feel. Now we went with an ATX-based chassis, even though we've selected a Microtex motherboard because we went with one, a larger graphics card. But also optionally, one of our core recommendations, if you wanna be able to bump up to a higher end motherboard, would be an ATX-based motherboard. Going with an ATX-based chassis gives you the most flexibility for future upgrades, whether it's gonna be different types of cooling configurations, large graphics cards like our tough, our tough Gaming Series or our Strix Gaming graphics cards, or like I said, larger motherboards. Now some of the cool things that the GT301 offers is gonna be three RGB fans, which already come with it to really allow you to have a good, nice level of airflow for your system, but also have a cool stylized aesthetic. It has a clean PSU shroud built into it, which really helps to clean up the overall bottom perspective when you're looking into your system. It's got a really nice uh, tempered glass aside panel, which also features a specialized latch design, so you don't have to worry about it falling off. And you've got a lot of flexibility in terms of where you can mount fans. And there's a lot of really good usability elements in terms of things like magnetic dust filters, which can be removed to easily be able to clean the chassis, uh, you know, as you're utilizing it to be able to make sure that you're getting the most effective airflow. Overall, it's a compact, but well-designed chassis that gives you good airflow and good flexibility, really to be able to have a well set up system. And you've also got a lot of options when it comes to cable routing easily and effectively inside this type of chassis. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the power supply here. We've gone ahead and selected a great power supply from a part with Seasonic and we've gone with our S12 650 watt power supply. Now this is a bump up from our previous recommendation but the main benefit is going to be of course with having a high performing GPU and of course optionally having more components that are connected and potentially overclocking the graphics card or the processor or installing more memory in the system. We want to be able to have a nice good amount of headroom built into the wattage in our power supply. So 650 watts really comfortably is going to let you run just about any GPU configuration even overclocked and again also some support much higher end CPU configurations on the motherboard. So it's gonna be a really great baseline of giving you a great level of stability and reliability and more than enough power for all the components right now, but definitely as you maybe upgrade your system down the road, you don't necessarily have to worry about swapping out your power supply because you've got a good foundation. And just like in our previous selection, I love the overall look and feel of the cables for this because they're flat black. Uh, so they really complement again, the look and feel of all the tough gaming components that we've got in our system. 
So now let's talk about some optional recommendations. This system, again, we were trying to really kind of maximize the budget that we had at a little bit over $1,000, right? With about that 1065 in terms of that overall budget. But there are a couple of things that, again, you could do if you wanted to be able to maybe define a little bit more specialized look and feel for your system. One of the easy ones would be upgrading to, let's say, an RGB tower heatsink, which is gonna give you a little bit lower temperature performance, maybe a little bit more headroom in terms of overclocking capabilities for the 3600. Although, again, the stock inbox cooler is gonna comfortably be able to handle the CPU without any issues. Now we've gone ahead and made a recommendation in the links in the description down below. The ID cooler that we've gone ahead and selected, again, is a really nice tower-based heat sink, so simple and easy to install, and it's got a really nice, cool RGB uh, aesthetic built into it to allow you to have a little bit more flair, especially when you have it installed in that GT301 chassis. Now beyond that, what might be some other recommendations? Again, just like in our previous build, you've got the option to be able to maybe add some additional fans, but keep in mind one of the reasons why we selected the GT301 is that it already comes with three RGB fans that are on the front, which give us great intake airflow. So optionally, if you really wanted to add additional uh, fans, you would really potentially only be looking at a rear exhaust fan for the system, which we'll go ahead and link in the description. 